Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. This is the second part of the short series, Cut and Finish with the Rotary. So we've cut the roof, the hood, and the trunk area, the trunk lid. Now we're going to start working on the sides, and we're going to tackle the worst area on this vehicle, and that's the cluster of deep scratches that are through the clear coat, through the base coat, through the primer, down into the fiberglass. So there are many ways to go about it. You could use uh, these blocks here, but to me, they are too hard. And I want something that conforms to the shape of that fender well. And I'm going to use this block right here. We'll start with 2000 grit. Then we'll step down or uh, step over to 3000 grit and polish out from there. And as I'm proceeding to wet sand, you'll see this white milky substance that is part of the clear coat that we're shaving off and shaving down. And normally when I see that, I like to flush it away, flush it away from the sand disc or paper itself to keep it effective. Check my work, and if I need to proceed, I'll keep going. If not, I'll go to the next step. Before I do go any further, let me bring you in close. Now, the only way to repair this completely and properly is to take it to a body shop, have them sand it down, maybe use a little filler, respray it, and let it cure. We're going to make it look a little bit better and give it our best and turn it from maybe a six footer into a one or a two footer, meaning we're just looking for improvements using the touch up paint that was um, sent along. We're going to put a little bit in our touch-up tray. We're going to use a um, hypoderm hypodermic needle, a diabetic needle would work, anything that can really squeeze out a very thin layer of the paint into those cracks is what you're looking for. And I'll show you just a little bit later. Then there There's many forms available uh, that can get that type of job done. This is what I'm using in this case. All I really want to do here is squeeze out a little bit of the touch-up paint into those deep crevices or scratches. You can really go down the rabbit hole here and spend a lot of time filling and wet sanding to uh, make them look as best as you can. But it all depends on the, uh, the imperfections, the type of budget that we have, the time that we have allotted for the package. That's going to determine how much time I'll put into these areas. Uh, so let me show you here, this pack you could pick up on Amazon. And if you have Prime, hey, there are just pennies on the dollar for a plastic bottle and a thin needle that gets screwed on top of it. Fill it with paint and you could do pretty much the same thing I was doing with those hypodermic needles. If you're looking for a more precise line from the needles, you'll have to go to the pharmacy itself and they carry them behind the counter. Okay, so after letting the touch-up paint dry and cure up and set, I'm going to do some wet sanding again and blend them in a bit. Grab the rotary once again, do a little bit of cutting and a little bit of finishing.
And here we go again to properly and completely fix the scratches. You'd have to take it to a body shop, but we turned it from a six footer into about a one footer or so. So you'd have to be at the right angle with the perfect amount of natural light to see them once again. All right. We have, again, we have the, the hood roof a trunk lid finished cut and finished. Let's work on the sides. Now these don't have the hard water and also etching into the paint. It's just love marks, swirls, a little bit of overall dullness, as you can see with this roll finder here. We could be lazy and just keep this exact same setup we had for the top of the car, but I like to preserve the clear coat and we're going to take a step backwards and get a little bit less aggressive. And we had this combination in one of the test areas that didn't quite have the aggressiveness for the top of the car, but will be perfectly fine for the sides of the car. As you can see, the shop manager skipping Halloween and has her Thanksgiving scarf on is keeping a close eye out on me. All right, so let's cut. We have a little area masked off so we can get a little bit of a 50-50 shot for you. This is what we have so far. We have removed the love marks, the uh, slight dullness and oxidation, and we've cut down into that clear coat a little bit, but we've left a little bit of hazing behind because of that step. So all we have to do is break out a different pad and a finishing polish and bring out the gloss and the clarity we're looking for. So here is the turnaround we're looking for with this particular package. And um, it is a very nice improvement going from those scratches and love marks 
and a little bit of cloudiness and oxidation to a nice, clear, clean panel. And now that I have made sure that this combination works perfectly fine, I'll continue around the driver's side, passenger side, front, and rear of the Corvette. And when we're finished making our rounds all the way around the car, I want to show you the surface before it gets protected when the clear coat is freshly corrected, yet clean and clear. And what you see is what you get. All done with the use of the rotary to both cut and finish. Now, I do have to wash this. We have used a rotary. It does get a little bit messy at times, but believe me, it is worth the little bit of extra effort just to pull it back out, rinse it off, or blow it off, and pull it back in before the protection phase. Now we can talk about the finish. Not perfect and the package was set up as to not look that way when we were done with it. We were looking for improvement and leaving behind as much clear coat as possible. This thing only has 14,000 miles on it and now we have the finish looking uh, a lot closer than it should towards that 14,000 miles compared to 114,000 miles and now it's worth a lot more. So let's remove the tape and the wheel covers and I can show you what we have to wash out. It gets a little bit messy using the rotary. And yes, you can always have it set up so it looks decent under the shop lights, but I always like to pull it outside and look at it under natural sunlight during the day. And again, not perfect but a whole lot of improvement was made and it was all done again using my favorite tool, the scalpel of my arsenal, the rotary. I urge you to pick one up, get some test panels if you're not comfortable with it. Come join one of my training sessions. The link will be down in the description box. We have one or two spots left for early November. Maybe we'll see you there and I'll show you how to use it in person. That's going to do it for this video and series as a whole. Let me know what you think down in the comment section of the rotary polisher. It's results, cutting and finishing, and overall use of the tool. Do you think you would add it to your arsenal?